good morning, New Life Church family. We're here Facebook Live. Um, I want to I want to welcome you, our extended family, and anyone else who might be joining us this morning. Um, we're thankful that despite the circumstances, that we can still gather together and enter into the presence of the Lord and to sit under the teaching of the Word. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraging you to be involved in this live stream by commenting with each other and by sharing. Also. Um, we know that they can take the people out of the assembly, but they cannot take the assembly out of the people. So I just encourage you to be encouraged this morning um, as we gather together and come let us uh, exalt the Lord and tell of his greatness. Father God, we thank you that um, as we aren't able to join together in person, Father, that we are here in technology, Lord, and we just pray that your presence will come, Father, that your presence would be present, Lord God, and we know that it is. So as we join together um, with our Facebook family, Lord, I just pray that um, that your presence would fall, Lord God, that your word would go forth, God, and in this time of uncertainty, Lord, we know that you are certain, and we stand on you, Father God. So we just thank you for who you are and what you're doing, what your hands are doing, and what you're at work at right now, Lord Jesus.
mother's womb, you have chosen me. family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no Jesus. We thank you for your presence, Father God. We thank you that you meet us here, Lord God. We thank you that in this time, Father, you still meet with us. You still join together with us, Lord Jesus. And as your presence has come, not only here, Father God, but at each house that is watching simultaneously to a church service this morning, not just New Life Church, but all the other churches involved in live stream, Father. We pray that the message will go forth that your presence would be there, Father God, and that hearts would be um, at ease, hearts would be comforted, Father God, anxieties and fears would just be put to rest right now in the name of Jesus. Amen.
This morning we are attempting to break fear off of everybody who's joining us through Facebook Live. We know that these are days, even as Jesus prophesied, where men's hearts will fail them because of fear. And maybe that explains why heart disease is one of the most leading causes of death in our culture. But God has given us authority to break that. Fear is a spirit that God has not given to us. So if God has not given it to us, then we have the authority to say no to it, to resist it, to break it, to command it to go. So through worship and through the word this morning, we are speaking to the family of New Life Church, and we are commanding that every seedling of fear that has entered into your heart through the ordeal that we're going through right now be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It will not torment the people of God. It will not light, latch, or leech upon God's people from this day forward. Be free in the name of Jesus. Well, welcome, New Life Church family. This is a first for us, as it, as it is maybe for many of you, as you uh, come together to join us on Facebook Live, live streaming here. Um, I was thinking as Melissa was leading us in worship this morning about the verse in the scripture that says that God would take Judah and unite Judah with his people. In other words, God says, I'm going to unite my people through praise. The name Judah meaning it, meaning praise. Uh, this morning we are a scattered church. We are scattered as far as Westwood to Munising, all the way on, all the way on up to Big Bay. We're, we're a scattered people right now. But isn't it amazing how by the power of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of God, that God can take praise and worship and bring us together and unite us as one. I will unite Judah. I will unite praise with his people. Well, it's been about a week since uh, we met. We met last week as a, as a church family, and I don't know about you, but with all the warfare going on in this present hour, it seems like that week has been months since I've seen you. And I feel somewhat like Paul the Apostle when he wrote to the church at Rome, the church at Thessalonica, and the church at Philippi when he said, I long to be with you. I am, as your pastor, missing you. Um, it seems like it's been a lot longer than a week to me. I hope you feel that way about me. Uh, we'll find out when we come back together again. Um, this past week, you received a letter from the church office uh, kind of instructing you as to what we're going to attempt to do as we navigate these uncharted waters. Um, we are going to try to bring you a Facebook Live every Sunday at 1030, same time, um, with a similar format as to what we're doing right now this being the flagship for us as we launch something brand new. But also in that letter, we outlined that we are going to be doing things during the week. Uh, things like the elder board and our church leadership bring in a five-minute devotional uh, for you. Uh, things like having a worship night where we'll just designate a certain night where we can come together through live stream again and, and worship. Uh, my encouragement to you is to look at our Facebook page, look at our website, um, call the church office. We may not be in the office, but we have access to those phone calls, and we can outline you and let you know as to what's going on. Our goal and our desire through this medium is to be able to stay connected as the church of the living God. There's a lot of talk going on, uh, at least in my hearing, about Psalm chapter 91. So what I want to do is I want to interrupt the series that I've been doing at church on how to be bold for God, a verse-by-verse -verse teaching on Acts chapter 13 to Acts chapter 28. I want to interrupt that for a, for a moment here this morning, and I want to speak to you out of Psalm chapter 91. So go ahead and find your Bibles, if you will. I don't know how you can click on them with your phone, if you're looking at your phone, but you know more about that than me. Psalm chapter 91, I want to read the first four verses, very familiar verses to, to us, out of a very relevant chapter for our present hour. Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the Father and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. Again, Psalm 91 is a, is a very good chapter to stand upon during these trying, uh, troublesome, turbulent times 
that we're living in. I mean, just in this one chapter alone, you read about things like hidden traps, um, things like um, arrows that come at us by day, terror that comes at us by night, deadly pestilence. You read about things like fighting against lions and snakes. It's all there in chapter 91 of the book of Psalms. But I think what's important for us to understand this morning is that the principle of protection that we find in Psalm chapter 91 is very relevant for the current challenges that we're facing today. Uh, things like um, drunk driving, exotic diseases and pestilence attacking us on every side, drive-by shootings. Um, there's all kinds of challenges that we are facing in the hour that we're living in. And I think that the challenges that we're facing are just as dangerous as what the challenges were that are described here in Psalm chapter 91. Now the problem as a pastor, when you teach on God's protection out of Psalm 91, is somebody is always going to think out there, yeah, but I know somebody who died maybe to already to COVID-19 that was standing on, on Psalm 91, and yet they still passed away. What do you say about that? Well, I don't, I don't really even know how as a pastor to, to address that. It takes somebody a lot smarter than me to be able to handle a question like that. But what I do know is that God wants us to live with trust in our walk with Jesus. In particular, that we trust God with every outcome that comes into our life. And trusting may be hard, but he is trustworthy. And that's why Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Have you ever read that? He says, yet will I trust him. Trusting God is an act of your will. It's not because all the dots are being lined up. It's not because circumstances are favorable. It's not because all your glands are functioning just right. Trusting is an act of your will. Yet will I trust him. So we're not judging by the sight of our eyes. We're not judging by the hearing of our ears. We are judging by a resolve, a resolve of our will, a resolve of, of our heart that we are going to trust the Lord. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That sounds like a man who trusted God with the outcome. Whether he live or dies, he trusted to the sovereignty of an almighty, all-knowing, all-loving God. Now, in Psalm chapter number 91, uh, we read about the hidden life. And I want to just tell you in no uncertain terms that the hidden life is very important to us this day for two reasons. Number one, because it creates isolation, both spiritually as well as physically. Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard digs, and I've heard innuendos, and I've heard remarks since we've been told to stay at home from people that will say things like, well, if you're really a man or a woman of faith, you won't stay home. You go out there and you'll go about your life because you're a man, you're a woman of faith. God's going to take care of you. Why are you hiding in your house? I've heard things like that, as I'm sure you have. But let me just remind you that being quarantined or being locked up, there is a precedent for that in the scriptures. Uh, you will recall when God told his children to go through lockdown and stay in their house, hide in their homes under the blood of Jesus during the Passover in Egypt mm -hmm. until the death angel passed by, and then you can get on with your life. So there is a precedent for lockdown. There is a precedent for quarantine. It's called wisdom. It's called faith and wisdom expressing themselves together in our walk with Jesus. Now, I want to go back and I want to unpack just four verses out of this great chapter in Psalm chapter 91. So look with your eyes and follow these verses so you can catch what the Holy Spirit would say to us in the area of God's protection. Again, I'm talking about the hidden life. Verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's almost a, a cause and effect feeling with verse number one, because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, or literally because we live in the presence of God, the effect of that's going to be is we're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Cause and effect. 
The presence of God is a very, very good place to run to when things get hot. Uh, let me rephrase that. The presence of God is a very, very good place to dwell. Uh, the word dwell in verse number one means to live. It means to remain. It means to take up a homestead in the presence of God and then resist all claim jumpers. Uh, you and I, especially in this hour, realize full well that the devil wants to jump our claim to God's presence so that he can move us out of the presence of God into fear, into doubt, unbelief, anxiety, or worry. But understand this morning that the very thing that the devil wants to move you out of is the thing that God requires of us if we're going to be an overcomer, and that is the presence of God. So I want to issue you this morning a threefold challenge in making God's presence a place where you live. Number one, challenge number one, keep praise and worship alive and well in your home. It ought to be echoing in your hallways, seeping on into the kitchen when you're over the dishes. It ought to be in your living room when you come through the front door. Keep praise and worship alive and well in your home. Let me illustrate to you this way. If you were sitting at your kitchen table and you had in front of you resting on that table an old-fashioned scale and you took your praise and worship life and put it on one of the balances and then you put Fox News on the other balance, which way would the scale tip? If we're going to live in God's presence, especially in this hour and in this moment, we need to keep praise and worship alive and ringing and loud and boisterous within the walls of our home. Number two, to live in God's presence, I want to challenge you to find two Bible promises, memorize them, and then convert them into fighter verses. Uh, recently, we had somebody in our church that posted on social media uh, the importance of fighter verses. And then she posted what her fighter verse was. And then she challenged us to post our fighter verses. And I remember reading those verses. And I remember the faith that welled up within me just by reading those fighter verses. For example, let me give you my two fighter verses during this hour. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, neither be thou dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, and yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I am fighting day and night with that Bible verse. My other verse is Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. But thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. And then the third thing we ought to do, if we want to live in God's presence, is pray through. Pray through our fears. Pray through our doubts. Pray through our anxieties. One of the ways you know that you have prayed through is you come out on the other side. What does the other side look like? It looks like the peace of God that passeth all understanding. So keep praise and worship alive in your home. Find two promises from God's word and memorize them and pray through. If you do those three simple things, you will live, dwell, remain, resist all claim jumpers to the very presence of God. It's time for you and I, as the people of God, as the body of Christ, to learn how to convert God's presence into a shadow. Uh, not the shadow of a mighty God, but the shadow of the almighty God. Where we understand through praise and worship that we create that shadow that we come in there, under and we find protection. Now that presupposes two things this morning. Number one, in the ancient world, we know that the sun was very hot and oppressive. So what the people used to do is they used to look for a shadow. They used to look for shade. Because if they could get in that shadow, they could get out from underneath the sun and all of its oppression and heat. It also presupposes, number two, that in the ancient world, whenever you'd go to visit somebody in their home, it was always the job or responsibility of the host to assume that he was going to be your protector while you were in his home, while you were in his presence. I want to challenge you to understand that as we learn to come into the presence of God through praise and worship, at that moment, God hosts us. 
And as our host, he assumes responsibility for our well-being and our personal protection. Mm. So he says in verse 1, He who dwells, abides, remains, lives in the presence of God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Look closely at verse number 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. We don't know who the author of Psalm 91 is. But whoever it is, notice what he says in verse 2. He says, I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge. Not he was my refuge, or not he is going to one day be my refuge, but he is my refuge right now, in this hour. No, not even in this hour, but in this very moment. God is his refuge. God is our refuge, a very present help in time of trouble. Now, with that said, according to verse 2, it's very important that we learn how to guard our words. That's why he says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, my God. The more things get hot, the more we ought to guard our talk. Let me say that again. The more things get hot, the more we ought to guard our talk. We are challenged with social media. Uh, the cable news network. Um, we're challenged by people that come into our proximity. And with all this buzz about the coronavirus and how dastardly and destructive it is, and it is in every sense of the word. But we need to maintain as the people of God our discipline and not chime in with them, but hang on to our proclamations, mm -hmm. our declarations, and our confessions. So he says, in light of all this calamity, I will say of the Lord, not what Fox News just told me. I will say of the Lord, not what the cable networks are telling me. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. I really like what he brings out in the next verse, verse number three. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. There are deadly hazards all throughout life. Let me remind you that these deadly hazards were here long before the coronavirus ever came on the scene. And God has delivered us from every single one of them. And even if you know of people who have already succumbed and died to the coronavirus, God still wants us to have trust in him as it pertains to the outcome of our life. He is sovereign, he is God, and he is in control. And watch what verse number three. Verse number three calls this pestilence perilous. But I like what the King James Version calls it. It calls it noisome pestilence. You'll agree with me that nothing is getting any more noise than the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. It is indeed a noisome, noisome pestilence. But the people of God, who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, the people of God who live in God's pure, unadulterated presence, hey, we can make some noise of our own, can't we? And the noise we make is hallelujah. So we raise a hallelujah in this hour. The noise we make is bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The, the noise we make is that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is going to be praised. Just as the coronavirus is making a lot of noise because it's a noisome pestilence, you and I can make a lot of noise also. And whatever noise is the loudest in your ear will determine your outlook. So again, he says in verse number three, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Verse four, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. In verse number four, God's presence is spoken of figuratively as likened unto wings or as unto feathers. Uh, in Malachi chapter number four, God's wings are used for healing. In Psalm 91, God's wings are used for hiding. 
One has to do with suffering. The other has to do with securing. And just as in the animal world, that mother chick will spread out her wingspan and gather her little chicks unto herself to protect her from the evils that assail them on every side. We are living in a challenging time and it is absolutely no match for the tender, loving protection that our Heavenly Father offers us as He stretches out His presence and gathers us unto Himself that where He is, there we may be also. And did you notice in verse number four the importance of God's word? He says, His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Shield and buckler. We are double armored in this time of testing and trial. And I don't know about you, but I know that we are washing our hands continually throughout the day. We have hand sanitizers in our coat pockets. We have them on our cupboards. Uh, in our kitchen and we are constantly washing our hands I want to encourage you to always be washing your soul also during this hour by the washing of the water of the Word of God we wash off fear we wash off doubt and unbelief and anxiety and worry Psalm 91 is a chapter full of promises and we've only looked briefly at four verses God's promises are very important to us in this hour. God's promises are longer than life, broader than sin, deeper than the grave, and higher than the clouds. Find your promises, grab onto your promises, and let them keep you afloat during this time and this hour. God is committed to protecting us. We cooperate with Him by the words that come out of our mouth. We cooperate with Him by choosing to praise and worship Him and thus live under His outstretched wingspan. The presence of God is our buffer. The presence of God is our shield. The presence of God is, in every sense of the word, our protection. Commit to it and sell out to it in the name of Jesus. If you want to know more about Psalm chapter 91, we have a lady in our church, Joni Scott, who has a a podcast out that I listened to yesterday and it was phenomenal and I would encourage you to find that somehow and just dwell with her daily in Psalm chapter 91. I want you to bow your heads right where you're at. I want to pray for the church that's scattered right now that through this time of church God will unite us with his people. Father <clears throat> I pray for your sons and your daughters. I ask that faith which comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God will come alive on the inside of your, of your people. We are lively stones filled with grace, filled with power, and filled with glory. We are lively stones that make our own noise that is every bit greater than the noisome pestilence that we hear day in and day out. And I ask, Lord, that you will keep us safe and protected during these days. I long for the time when I can see their face and be back with them at New Life Church, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Your word says that we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And I just, as the pastor of this great congregation, release your presence and your protection upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, I'd like to close by reminding you to, to uh, stay connected with us. Follow our Facebook page. Follow our website page. And we'll let you know what the next um, meeting will be. We for sure will be meeting next Sunday at 1030. But also during the midweek days, we add things that are planned. And we'll let you know as those things arise. We love you. God bless you. Live and camp out in Psalm 91.